morning. Hello. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about death. Um, because I teach a class called Death Becomes Us at, here at MSU in the Honors College. I've been spending a lot of time um, thinking about the subject, writing about this subject, reading, studying, and now I get to teach a class with students. So what I'd like to do today is share some of the lessons some of the things that we've discovered in this class, which has been going on since 2017. I come to this almost obsession with death, I think, as a young child. When I was eight, my father died uh, tragically and, and violently, but no adult in my sphere wanted to talk about it ever. We never talked about it. Two years later, when I was 10, the extended family gathered around my grandfather's bed and watched as the home visit doctor traced his heartbeat to the spot. Again, nobody wanted to discuss what had happened. What, what, where did he go? What, what happened here? Who? Yeah, I'm having memories about that. So, I never got my questions answered. So like most of us, I joined the mainstream and just pretended that you know, death was somewhere down the road. I don't need to be bothered with it. And uh, yeah. Huh, wow. in, in 2006, I was thinking about becoming a mortuary student. And a friend of mine gave me a book called The Denial of Death by Ernest Becker, Pulitzer Prize winning book, about how we cope or don't cope with the fact that we know we're going to die. And in that moment, I knew that I had to uh, create some sort of class around this, some sort of teaching. So I, I, I presented a uh, proposal to the Honors College, and we created the the uh, Death Becomes a class. One of my greatest compliments around this class happened in the hall one day when the faculty asked me, excuse me, you're teaching a death class, are you not? And I said, yeah, of course, that's my class. And he said, why is there so much laughter coming out of that? What is going on? And the, the reason it was one of the greatest compliments is it reaffirmed to me that by actually speaking honestly and truthfully and openly about the fact that we are mortal actually connects us to each other and to the life force. Uh, we often think when we deny death that we will stave it off, we will push it into the distant future. But what actually happens is we crimp off a lot of other feelings as well. So what's happening in the death class, and this is one of, my, one of my favorite things, is that within a few weeks, everyone's talking about death, everyone's sharing real experiences, people are sharing laughter, people are sharing tears. In fact, when we speak openly about death, it becomes actually a liberating force and not necessarily something to be afraid of. There's something about the normalization of something we actually know already is going to befall us that lifts the spirits. It's, it's not, a, it turns out to be less frightening and, and, and more acceptable if we normative, if we normalize it as uh, our fate. The, the other thing that I've learned in this class, and I think this could be one of the most important things. Not expressing grief becomes a toxic reality. Um, the New York Times last year during the pandemic said that the United States was facing a grief crisis. The fact that we can't express it, we get, we get ashamed or we get put down or we get frightened or we get inhibited, when in fact the, the most important thing is to share 
what happens in the classroom as we read different books and people share their experiences, all this wellspring of grief percolates to the surface. And people start sharing stories about grief they haven't felt about a pet that passed away, or a grandparent that passed away, or a relationship that ended. And the, the grief wells up and it feels like a cleansing. And this becomes a bonding experience. It's like a communal sharing of grief. It's absolutely powerful and uh, releasing. And this becomes part of the fabric of the class, you know, for the entire semester. It becomes very, very important. One of the, one of the ways it becomes toxic is that people transmogrify their grief into either shame or into anger. And, a, and an abundance of those two feelings is typically not helpful. Um, a, a teacher of mine, Maladoma Somme, who was an African man with the Dagara tribe in Burkina Faso, he and I were talking one day, and he explained that in his tribe, when the men feel grief, they don't wipe the tears from their eyes. And I said, well, why is that? And he said, because when the women and children see the men's tears, they know they're safe. This is the power of expressing grief. And, and throughout this class, we've, be, we've begun to do this. And it's one of the most, uh, one of the most powerful and tender, vulnerable moments that we get to experience in that class. And the students uh, rise to the occasion and uh, are transformed in the process. Even at their young ages of 18, 19, and 20, there are griefs that they haven't brought to the surface. And there's an opportunity to do that. The other thing about this class the premise of the class is that we are the only critters who know that we are going to die in the future. We can imagine it, we can see a, a movie and say, oh, that can happen to me. Uh, so the, the class is designed to uh, puzzle out What, what types of impact the fact that we're conscious of our mortality has on us. And as we explore those things, we also look at the flip side, which is like, what kind of acts bring us life and joy? So what we've discovered in the class is when we activate the knowledge of our mortality through discussion, through reading, through a movie, the counterbalance of doing life-affirming acts uh, be becomes a way to digest those feelings of anxiety, existential anxiety around their own mortality. So the, the, the final comment in each uh, class is, go out and do life-affirming acts. That plugs us back into the life force. I think one of the most profound things that one of the students said to me about this class, and I think it's true, he said, when, when I have thoughts of death for whatever reason, it's my opportunity to use this uh, awareness of death as a compass. He says, I stop in that moment when death crosses my screen, whether it's something I'm talking to a friend about, or something I've seen in a movie. And I use that moment to use mortality, my impending mortality, as a compass. A compass for my behavior, a compass for me to check in and say, if I die tomorrow, what kind of life will I live? Uh, so mortality, rather than, we, 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 the only uh, the options are either numbing out and denying or being so existentially anxious that we don't function, is that middle ground. That middle ground of befriending death uh, and, and being, being more and more comfortable with it. So, 
So I think I want to end fairly, I think I want to end right here with this idea that if you befriend death, you simultaneously befriend life. So now that I've brought up death to you guys' consciousness, make sure you go out and do life-affirming acts all day long. And uh, yes, when we befriend, carry death lightly on our shoulder. When we befriend death, we befriend life.